calling all members of the in crowd. If you want to get in on the action, we want to hear from you. Hit us up, faderoutemail at gmail.com or slide in our DMs on IG at Fade Route Podcast or drop us a line on X at Fade Route DNZ. You can find us on Facebook, The Fade Route with DNZ. We're on Spreaker. We're on YouTube, The Fade Route with DNZ. Catch our videos. Like, subscribe, share, tell your friends, and spread the word. Coming at you from the Hey Yo Studios, it's the Fade Route with D and Z. Here are your hosts, D and Z. Coming at you live from the AO studio. It's the Fade Route with DNZ IMD, and we've got a great show for you tonight. The Isles blow a lead, and the NFL draft is just a few days away. But we'll begin today's show with man, it's a great time to be a sports fan in New York. Yankees and Mets are over 500. Mets played very well on their West Coast trip so far against the Dodgers. The Rangers are in control of their first round series with the Capitals. And the New York Knicks are up 2-0 on the 76ers. So Z, which team are you most excited about and which team concerns you? Well, the way things are going, we have the potential to have an amazing early start to summer. Right at the highest of the highs since you have the number one overall least team in the NHL, right? That's the President's Trophy represents. You had the number two seed in the Eastern Conference in the NBA. The New York Yankees first in their division and up there in terms of best record in baseball. You have the Mets who are where they should be with series taking series teams that frankly we were heralding as World Series contenders knock off the Braves 2 out of 3 you knock off the Dodgers 2 out of 3 the Dodgers say what you will I don't buy for a second you know that uh, we're just going to scratch James Paxton but yeah James Paxton that, that seems a little panicky if I'm Dave Roberts, do I'm going to I'm going to MacGyver my rotation to get my ace in this in this matchup so we don't get swept like that. That seems a little that seems a little much for April, but it does show you what the other teams around the league think of the Mets. Like, yeah, they're the Mets and, you know, people are used to being, you know, joking and shitting on them because it's fun to shit on the Mets. Right. It's fun to kick kick this organization around because you know they're very good at doing it themselves, but that's a desperation move very early in the uh, in the season, and that speaks very highly. That speaks that speaks very loudly in terms of what the league think of the Mets if they're going to maneuver their rotation this early. But baseball is a marathon, so you're never as good as when you're going great you're never as bad as when you're going bad right the way the rangers played and frankly out of the washington capitals if they can consistently do that over the course of these next four rounds of the playoffs we could have something we 30 years so i'm very excited about that i'm waiting with bated breath right the knicks the knicks you'd love to see because you haven't seen it since the 70s so that would be wonderful if you're a Knicks fan. You, you've been waiting for a very long time. And much like the Mets, you have been the, the brunt of the joke for a very long time. And I'm sure that there are plenty of Knicks fans out there that are pissed off. And rightfully so. Right? So, you know, now's the time for a, for a little chest puffing. That, leave, that leaves the Yankees. The Yankees kind of scare me with their bullpen. The offense is a little slow. You know, but at the same time, it's like, 
I'm not going to get too panicked about the Yankees. Like, they give me a little bit of agita, give me a little bit of concern. At the end of the day, they're going to, those guys are going to play to the back of the baseball. It's bound to happen. And if Garrett Cole gets healthy, which it sounds like he is, it sounds like he's getting closer and closer every day. And, you know, maybe that's a June return, maybe it's a July return. I have, I have faith that they will be able to turn that around. We will definitely see, but they give me the most pause. The Rangers will, the Rangers give me the most delight. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's the Rangers. How could you not be excited? I mean, they've got a great draw the first round against the Capitals. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're fucking dominating them. They're up 2-1 right now. Uh, and then, you know, uh, if we get on to the next round, they have a really good shot of making it to the championship. Uh, Stanley Cup Finals. Kreider just playing on his game. Everybody just seems to be clicking and gelling very well. Um, Knicks, too. Knicks are facing the Sixers team that's banged up. They're able to beat the Sixers. Boston will be their biggest challenge. And if they can beat Boston, they're going to the finals. And, you know, the game that was yesterday, we're going to talk about it. I mean... You know, usually they're on the other side of that. Completely. They're the ones that, you know, have the ball not tipped their way. Fouls don't get called and they lose, right? We've seen the Knicks lose that game a hundred times. So the fact that they won and how they won, it just makes you feel like the times are turning for them. As far as the Mets are concerned, I mean, hey man, they started out 0-5 and I've really, and they've really righted the ship. I mean, and they've gone into the West Coast. They're facing the Dodgers. They're facing the Giants. They're going to be facing the Padres. And they've got a chance to come home. Sign up for it at 0-5. And how could you not be happy about that? You know, it really was looking pretty... Right, right. It was really looking kind of bleak. But now you're like, okay, we, we're we going to play hard. We don't have superstars. We don't have great talent. But hey, man, we're going to play hard. So if they can just continue to play hard, they should be fine. The team that actually concerns me, I think it's the New York Yankees. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. You've got Aaron Judge mm-hmm. batting under 200. Okay? Juan Soto has run his spot. Run it. He is the right fielder now. He is the captain of this team. He is the one that's getting all the cheers. He's the one that's getting all the attention. And we're just getting a taste and seeing how Judge can respond to that. Because Cole is out. Judge isn't hitting. But they're still in like first or second place. So now it's like, well, Judge, if you were playing better, we'd be in first. And then if Soto happens to go in a slump, which I doubt is going to happen, it's going to be Judge's job to pick up the slack. And can he? I don't know. And then, you know, Z, if they go to, if they're able to get to the, 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 the American League Championship Series, or even if they're able to get to the World Series, and it's mainly because of Juan Soto, and then Juan Soto leaves, and Aaron's judge goes back to right field, and it's more of the woes, not good, man. Not good. So, yeah. I think the Yankees concern me right now. I think they're off to a nice start um, considering what their division's looking like because the Orioles really haven't been playing as good as we anticipated. I mean, I think they're still in first, but I think they're 15 and seven. We thought Jackson Holiday though was going to be a better player. We thought there you might have like I you know what he's a prospect man. Come on, like that's the thing about prospects. They could easily he was the number know. one prospect. Look yeah, at the number one prospects for the last couple of years. Ronald Acuna was a number one prospect. Look at how he's playing. Like you know, you just he Jackson Holiday hasn't had a week, hasn't had a hit in seven mm-hmm. days. He hasn't had. He is how many num- eleven? Like how many number one overall in picks days. made in Major League Baseball? More than not, they don't make it. More often than. I think only three right. have actually made the Hall of Fame. So, I mean, that tells you all you need to know. Like, Jackson Holiday will find his water. 
but he'll find it. Now, can you yeah. name those three players? I got one. I can. So Chipper Jones. Okay. Chipper Jones. Yeah. Ken Griffey Jr. And Harold. Oh. Baines. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> so close. So close. Hey, man. Mr. Joe Mauer. Mr. Joe. He was in the Hall pick. 1-1 one, one to the Minnesota Twins. But he's not a Hall of Famer. Is he a this Hall of year. Famer? Is he a Hall this of Famer? This year. Oh, there you go. There you go. You have a fourth four. to the list. So there's more likelihood that Jackson Holiday will be Phil Nevin than... Jer- Stati- statistics and history are on that on the side of that argument. But, you know, you got to give him time to develop. You got to get him back down. So Lee Mays can get sent back down. Then Jackson back gets sent back down because he's not ready. Like that's okay. And realistically, Jackson Holiday for the Baltimore Orioles is like parsley on the plate. They don't need him. They don't need him right now. They didn't need him last year. They don't need him now. Mm, no, they. Yeah, yeah, they don't really need him. Step outside of your safe area and make a statement without saying much with FCK Clout Lifestyle Apparel. Embrace the colorful chaos and stay emotionally regulated in their hoodie, snapback, graphic tees, accessories, and more. Season 3 merch is up now. Get it while you can. Go to fckclout.com and get all of your needs from men and women. That's fckclout.com. Like we talked about, the NBA playoffs are off to a great start, but the 76ers hmm. are not. <laughs> the 76ers went down 2 0 thanks to the Nova kids. Brunson and Hart dominated the 76ers in game one, and DiVincenzo buried a three in the closing seconds of game two. Embiid had 34 points, but he was visibly in discomfort. Somebody, I read a stat yesterday, he's only had 19 ducks all season. That's ridiculous. So, what would you say about Embiid's career so far? I would say that Joel Embiid is wasted potential. As good as he is, there's a ceiling. Now, some of that is due to Daryl Morey. Right? Some of that is due to the roster creation around him. Some of that is due to the fact that he could not stay healthy. Right? He it, it took him years to kind of figure that out. And still, he hasn't really figured it out. Right? I mean, you saw the dunk, and then it looked like his knee buckled. It looked like he was, he was down on the ground and crumpled in pain. So, you know, it, it goes to show you that I don't want to say he's brittle because he, he has worked very hard and he's not as brittle as he used to be. Not New Orleans Noel at the beginning of his career. Like that was, you know, something to be, something to be marveled at the, the, with ease with which players got, got injured, but supremely talented guy. I mean, you can't doubt Joel Embiid. <laughs> you can't doubt Joel Embiid's talent level. Like that's, that's a given. He's a stuck, but with that comes a lot of baggage and a lot of wasted potential. And it just makes you wonder. It makes you wonder, right? They brought guys to build him. They tried to make like a super team. What What is the winning formula? I still haven't figured it out. And how do you fit this piece into the puzzle? Now that he's 30, that's something that you really need to start answering. And you have to start asking that question. Because as supremely talented as he is, he's also 30 now. Like, that's something that you need to be wary of. And he's a big. He's not a 30-year-old guard. He's not LeBron. Like, that body's going to start breaking down even faster than it already has. So... There's a lot of what if with Joel Embiid. As good as we've seen a lot, as much flash as we've seen, there's a lot of what if there. And it makes you wonder, at what point does Philly realize, hey, 
you know, maybe we need to cut bait here or maybe we need to bring in a superstar, a legit superstar, to which Joel Embiid can be the complimentary player, not a superstar that compliments Joel Embiid. Yeah, I mean, for me, the problem is, is like I'm comparing him to Joker, right? And Joker, he's got Mm, two MVPs, right? I mean, if Joker is able to go back to the finals this year, even if he just gets there, I mean, we're talking about he's cracking the top 15 players of all time, right? I mean, he's entering Hakeem Olajuwon status. He's entering Shaquille O'Neal status. I mean, so Joker's already got a championship. He looks like he might be headed back. And then when you look at the numbers, guess how many games Joker missed this year? He missed three games. My man played 79 fucking games. Three. That's crazy. And then you look, and he missed three Three. games. And then when you look at his playoff numbers and you compare it to Embiid, he's averaging three more points. He's averaging 27 points per game in the playoffs. Yeah. Right? He's averaging, his three-point percentage is 412. So, 0.412. That's crazy for a big man. Mm He's averaging 12 rebounds a game, 7.3 assists, one steal like his playoff numbers are just stupid they're stupid and if you want to take it a tick higher you want to take it a tick higher if we're looking at just this round just in the last two games he's played he, he's shooting he's shooting 60 percent from the field he's shooting 42 percent from three and he's averaging 29 uh 29 uh, 16 and 8. Jesus Christ. 29, yeah. 16 and 8, Z. So, that's the problem I have with Joel Embiid. He just, it, you know, he hits the ground way yep. too much. Um, his, his, his potential has always revolved around, like, who else was there? You know, Tyrese Max, he's good, but we saw last night, that's not going to get it done. His best chance is with, yep. with Simmons and Harden, and just, he wasn't there long enough. And it's a shame because I agree with you. I think it is wasted talent because from him being hurt and then finally getting into the league and being everything that the Sixers wanted in a big man, like he could shoot, he could dribble, he could score, to come away with this with not even a finals appearance is just, it's terrible. Like I can't. After this year, I can't imagine his stock going up, as terrible as that sounds. I mean, yeah. you see him out there last night. He's laboring, man. Like He he can barely get up and down the floor. Every time he comes off the floor, they got to rub his knee, like keep it, keep it loose, keep it going. And even the, his facial expressions, he doesn't have the facial expressions he had like when he was going against the Raptors and Kawhi Leonard. He doesn't have the facial expressions he had, like, you know, earlier on in his career. He looks like he's tired. He looks like he's shot. He looks like he's in a lot of pain. If you feel like it, right. he looks like what I am at 40, like going up and down the court, like, fuck, <laughs> like, ah, oh, I got to shoot this. Like, you know, I got to, I got to take the ball. All right. Oh, and then we throw it off the backboard and try to put it in. Like, you know, you're just running out of ways to beat people. Malik, Malik, Malik. So that's that's uh, unfortunately what his story is going to be. I think he's going to just be just another guy. Um, well, it, you know, I mean, he's thirty though. Echelon. Yeah, but I just don't. I, I can't see it getting. I can't. I can't see it getting better. That's my problem. It's like I'm looking at other guys that were around his age at thirty and how much more they accomplished or where they were. That's what I'm saying. I'm looking at Joker. Like, come on, Z. For the next five years, you taking Joker or you took taking Embiid? When you're looking at Embiid and you compare him to Elijah Wan, would you rather have Elijah Wan or Embiid? I have Elijah. Would you rather have Tim Duncan or Embiid? Tim Duncan. Would you rather have Charles Barkley or Embiid? Charles Barkley, like, Charles Oakley, Charles... Ed, yeah. It's just this... No. You're not going to get out of the first round against the Knicks, man. Like, that's bad. That's really bad. Is it though? The Knicks are a better team. The Knicks are a better team. Get get credit where credit is due. Better team. 
no, the Knicks are a better team, but you're you're not you're not affecting the game. You're not affecting the game. Like you're not being the difference in your team winning and losing. Your team is losing. <laughs> They're losing. Even Giannis, fucking Giannis was able to get to the championship and win. And that guy, all he could do is lay up the ball. That's all he could do is go to the basket layup. He can't shoot. He can't shoot foul shots. All that he guy bullied his way to the championship. Go to the basket. True. Go to the rack. It's true. But he was able to do it. He bull- He did. He bullied his way to a championship. But at some point, it's just like, come on, are, who are... But if I'm, if I'm the Sixers, I'm look, I'm looking at this and I'm saying we cannot build our franchise around Joel Embiid. Like we tried it with James Harden, we tried it with Ben Simmons, we tried putting together the process with Noel and Fultz and all the young guys. Like at some point, you need a bigger star. Like you need you need a better player that will be ball dominant. And then he can be the other guy. I don't know who that is. They had Jimmy Butler at one point. Like Jimmy Butler was, I, I think that's a perfect fit because Jimmy Butler is the guy. And in the playoffs, who would you rather have? Like that's in terms point. of indomitable, like, he was there. Like they had him and they let him go. They let him walk to Miami. They had him. They let him go and they didn't yeah. win. And they didn't win with him. So uh-huh. that's what I'm trying to say. Z. Like, what? How is it going to get better? It's not gonna get better. It's been it's been the best it's ever been. He's played with Harden. He's played with he's playing with Maxi right now. He played with Ben Simmons. Say what you want about Ben Simmons. He was okay. Uh, he played with Jimmy Butler. J, I think JJ Reddick there was there for a hot JJ second. was there. Yes. I hate that guy, but I'm just saying he's played with talent. He's played with talent, and it's just he's not. It's, it's not getting there, man. No, and I think. It's a it's a point of contention. When Knicks bounce them, there needs to be a, a little soul search. I beat himself. Like he's not the process. He can't be that guy anymore. And if I'm the Sixers, do I have the right to go to tell Joel Embiid I don't want you playing in the Olympics? You can't walk. Why would I let you? I'm paying your salary. Why would I let you do this? Like, at what point do at what point do uh, teams intervene here? Yeah. Same with Kawhi Leonard. Right, right. Like, if I'm Steve Ballmer, I'm, like, no, I need you here. I don't need you in Paris. I need you in LA. I, I don't need you in Paris. I need you in Philly. Like, I don't know. I I just, uh, it's just what might have been. What might have been? And for the guy, you know, he averaged he, he's first career. He's averaging close to thirty points a game. You know, it's like it. It's definitely like a, a shooting star. You know, he's averaging 30, 11, and three for his career. Even Kevin Durant had to go to Golden State to win. Just saying. Oh Jesus! Could you? What would you? What could you possibly fetch in an Embiid trade? That would. Hmm. Interesting. That would. That's another story for another time. Now you got the wheels turning. Well, but what? With most of the game two games in the bag and the game three games underway, which teams look good so far and which teams are in trouble? Well, the, set, uh, the Pacers play no defense. Like I think we established the fact that the Pacers play no defense. Like we kind of figured that was going to happen. Um, the Celtics are the Celtics. They're 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 going to do what they're going to do. I gotta say, like the chalk is who's impressive right now. The guys, the teams that you expect to be impressive are the teams that are impressing. Um, what most impressive is that the T-Wolves were able to hold off the Suns, right? You think veteran Kevin Durant, both the youthful immaturity of the Wolves that we saw on today and the total meltdown that they had. No, the, the Wolves seem to be a different animal. Anthony Edwards seems to be a different animal this year. Now, granted, it is only one game. It's early. But, like, you can tell. You you can tell when teams have matured and when they're youthfully ignorant. 
and the Wolves seem to have something here. Now, we'll see what happens when they play the Nuggets. We'll see what happens when they play the Thunder. But, you know, I'm impressed by the Wolves so far. Um, as far as teams that are kind of disappointing... Yeah, the Lakers... But the Nuggets... Like, I, I get you at a... They had a 20-point lead, and the Nuggets turned it on. But you shouldn't have to turn it on against the Lakers in the first round. Like, that that's... They're flipping the off switch and then flipping the on switch. Like, that's a little early for me. Um, that makes me consider whether or not it's going to be their year. But, you know, the teams that are good, we expect to be good. The Knicks, I, I expected them to be feisty, and they are very feisty. They, they are very feisty. They, they sent the Sixers back down the turnpike, and their announcers were just whining and crying about calls. Clean, he was in the bag. So, yeah, I, I mean, so far it's going according to Hoyle with the Wolves showing me the most. Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, the teams in the East that have impressed me so far are the Knicks. It's hard not to be impressed with their defense and their cohesiveness as a team right and then the next team really it's the Celtics I mean yeah. the Celtics they're, 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 they're gearing up for a run the teams that I'm embarrassed for or like what the hell is going on is ma- the magic the Orlando magic didn't show up man They're getting blown out by the Cavs every game what the fuck are you doing you guys playoff started last week what are you guys doing what the fuck is going on here to me that 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 is what happened last year to the T-Wolves like they're a year early but you need this in order to move on from it like I, I can see where you're you coming get from your dick kicked in yeah yes. You need to lose before you can win. Like, the, and you know, you, you need to lose at the next level. Like, it, it's that modicum of, su- of success, you know, it's that modicum of uh, improvement, if you will. But, you know, you got to put up some of a fight, uh, some semblance of a fight. You're absolutely right. So then on the Western side, I, I this might surprise me. I am really impressed with the Clippers and how huh. well they're playing without Kawhi Leonard. So, the idea that if you could get through this round without Kawhi Leonard and then get him back to face the Thunder, you'd be in great shape. The Mavericks are kind of disappointing because they're another team that got blowed out in the first game. Like, what the fuck? They don't got Kawhi Leonard. Why are you, lo- why, why are you losing by 30 in the fourth quarter? Like, what the fuck is going on? They, took, they had to take Kyrie out. They're like, yo, we'll just save you for the next, next game. It's like, what the fuck happened here? They might know how to shoot. Um, the fuck is going on? And um, yeah, and the other team that impresses me in the West, which I think it's going to come down to, is it's Nuggets, and it's really just because of Joker. Because, like we talked about earlier in the show, I mean, he, it's, it's twenty-seven points a game. He's shooting sixty percent from the field and forty-four percent from three. He's fucking almost seven feet tall. And he's just and he and and was it it's um, twelve rebounds, seven assists, seven assists. It's crazy. It's crazy. So he keeps playing like that. I think he's on the Clippers, and I think the Clippers are on a collision course with Nuggets. And in the in the East, it just seems like it'll be a showdown between the Celtics. Yeah, I would say so. I really don't see any scenario. Where I really don't see anything, no real upsets coming this way. It seems well, very chalky. It's kind of chalky. I mean, what the f- all eleven, all eleven games yeah. have been decided, but the home team has won all eleven games. <laughs> yeah. Great. So I mean, that's the NBA for you. Like, this is this is it. That you know the change the whole playoff format for four upsets for four flukes let's let's upset the whole fucking thing because four teams happen to lose so you know that's the nba in a nutshell but um i mean looking at this some of these teams it's just like i mean thunder pelicans like i 
I can't get you stuff for that. I'm sorry. Like, the, 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 I can't well, so get Zion's out too. Where the, right. What the fuck is going on with this guy? Uh, you have Miami Heat without Jimmy yeah, Butler. Might, what do you mean? I might come back this series. You might come back. What are you talking about? What the fuck are you doing? Um, I mean, this is the farthest he's ever been, and he's just, I might come back. I don't know. That seems a. I might come back this year. Maybe. We'll see. We'll definitely see. And I. He's not a superstar. Sorry. No, he's not. He's a good dunker. He's a good dunker. <laughs> like, that's who Zion Williamson is. He, show, he shows you who he is. Believe it. Maya Angelou said that, right? When people show you who they are, believe them. It, it's. Come on now. How many times are we going to get lulled in by the talent? How many times are we going to get lulled in by the dunking and the highlight reel? And that it's not just him. It's not just him. It's, it's pervasive throughout the league. Like, this is who the guy is. And right now, his team is on the losing end of a one nothing deficit in the series. So, later... Are you in need of air care maintenance or service? I have the company for you. Air Care Technicians. They service the Westchester and Northern Bronx area and can help you with all your heating and cooling maintenance and service needs. Just give them a call at 914-315-1547. Again, that's 914-315-1547. Or shoot them an email at aircaretechnicians at gmail.com. These guys are the real deal as they are veteran-owned, licensed, and insured. Make sure to tell them that D&Z sent you. Well, the, uh, the, the, M- the NFL draft is just a few days away, and both the Jets and the Giants have top 10 picks. Who should the Jets take at 10, and who should the Giants take Six, I think Giants. The Giants are sixth, yeah. At least right now. Now, they've been the subject of trade rumors the entire time. Now, yes, the Denver Broncos were considering moving up into the draft, and they very, stay, very well may still do so. But I don't know if they're going to move to six now that they acquired Zach Wilson. So... I'm not saying that Zach Wilson is the be-all end-all. That's not what I'm saying. But now they they may have made their move for the quarterback and just like maybe instead of going to six, they can move to like 12 or can 13. We, can we laugh about the... Can we laugh about the idea that the Broncos got rid of one Wilson and got another Wilson? There's oh been my just God. so many good memes out there about like... The Jets trading this dude, like, and then I love how on the Jets Instagram page they thanked Zach Wilson for what? I had a quote. I had, I had a comment. I was like, "Can you finish? Thank you." Can you finish the sentence? Like for like what for leaving? For I don't I don't even know. What are you thanking him for? What the fuck did he do? For refusing to play that one time, and then like he got talked into it, like for throwing his teammates under the <laughs> bus. <laughs> Yeah. Like Denver, hi- this dude could not wait to get out of here. Denver, hide your moms. Could not wait to get out of here. Hide your moms. Here we go. He's going cougar hunting. But you know, it, it's a good move by the. It's good. It's a good move by the Broncos though, because they don't have to reprint. The, they don't have to reprint the jerseys. He can just give them number three, and just just I do heard it. He wants five. I heard he wants number five. For what? But what a co- what a quarterback room you have got. Jared Stidham. Ugh. Zach Wilson, Jesus, and Ben DiNucci. Christ Almighty! Let's go! Let's ride! So let's ride. <laughs> maybe they could move up to number six. Maybe the Giants could make that happen because if they're enamored, <clears throat> if Sean Payton is enamored with JJ McCarthy, maybe he maybe he would move up to to make that make that deal. Um, I don't think he's his type of quarterback. It's not his kind of. JJ's not the kind of is not the kind of quarterback you want to coach. I don't think. Well, there none of them are Drew Brees. He might be in the market. He might be in the market for like a Bo Nix type. 
Yeah, so, okay, so you're looking like second round. Drake May type. So, uh, if you're going to... if That's the other thing. The, the Giants could use a quarterback because, you know, Daniel Jones and everything. But um, I don't need... I don't think you need to make that move at six because you figure May is going to be gone. Caleb Williams is going to be gone. Jalen Daniels is going to be gone. I can get Penix in the second round. I can get Nix in the second round, most likely. Or if I, I can trade back and get Bo Nix later in the first round, if I'm so inclined. McCarthy's a stretch. And, I mean, the other guys, the, every, everybody else is like a, a third to third to fifth round pick. Kind of like filling out the back end of your roster type deal. Um, That leaves you with the wideout. Do you take Odunze or do you take Neighbors? Neighbors is not... He is not uh, endearing himself well, we'll say. Right? Apparently, he's exp- he's exhibiting a lot of diva-like tendencies. Sounds like a wideout already. Sounds like an NFL number one wideout already. And... But he doesn't sound like a giant. No, exactly. Considering, in fact, the, the way the Odell Beckham situation went down, I, I don't think that what they're going to get Tony? him. Kadarius Tony too, went down the same way. Oh, God. They're not. Kadarius Tony would be in the first round. That's a Dave Gettleman thing. The, Dave Gettleman. The Giants are not about that life. No, not at all. So, Adunze would probably be a better move if they're going to go wide out. I would say go Adunze. Um, however, they have made an offensive line. So, if Joe Alt is available, if he's there at six, you take him. Right? You absolutely, you take yes, You take him. 100% take him. Don't blink. That's easy. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Brock Bowers. Both teams have been linked to him. I don't think the Giants need a tight end. Like, I don't think the Jets need a tight end, frankly. I mean, maybe if you... I mean, it's gilding the lily. It's parsley on the plate. I, I like the Giants' tight end room. I like what the Jets did. I mean, they lost, They got rid of CJ Uzama, so maybe that affects it a little bit. But I really don't see the need for either team to draft Brock Bowers. So... If I'm looking at the Giants, for me, it's either a Dunze or, or Joe Alt. And for the Jets, that's tough. Because what are the Jets realistically like? Are they gonna get? Are they gonna get somebody? Are they gonna get like an edge rusher? I, I think that would probably be a good idea. Uh, I mean, you could probably use another wide out, considering the fact that Alan Lazard. You know, basically MIA. So, I mean, you're not going to take a quarter unless you really want to piss off Aaron Rodgers. So, it's a little bit clearer for the Giants, in my opinion, than it is for the Jets. They can go a bunch of different directions. I'm going to say that the Jets are going to prioritize a pass rusher, and they'll just and they'll take best player available. But for the Giants, it's either Odunze or they're going to take Joe Alt. That that seems way clearer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think for the Giants, I kind of disagree with you, and I don't think a quarterback should be on their mind. Not at all. I mean, you you have there, you have you have Daniel Jones. The, this is the decision you made, so you're rolling with him. And really, what you should be doing is getting him a weapon because there's, there's really nobody to hand the ball to, and uh, you're gonna have to throw the ball to somebody. So. Yeah, I would go with Malik Neighbors from LSU. Or you start building for the future and you go get a tackle, go, go get the left tackle, Joe Holt. He's, he's, you know, he's going to be great. On the Jets side, I was talking with somebody at work about this today. The Jets are in a huge problem because of Aaron Rodgers. Because this is a draft that is full of quarterbacks and wide receivers and you're not going to draft a quarterback because you got this guy on your team like you know we're going to have former head coach of the Spack and Kill Spartans on later Clint D'Souza and I just don't know how that if Bo Nix is there at 10 or if Drake May falls to 10 how you can't take him? I don't know how that you're gonna you're gonna pass up on that. 
because you have been toting yourself that you're a quarterback away. And here's a guy who's a quarterback who could be your quarterback for the next couple of years. And granted, you know, you messed up with Zach Wilson. But that kid was, you know, the red flags were there. You just chose not to look at it. So I'm really curious to see how this is going to unfold because I do think they should take Bowers. They should take Jake Bowers, take the tight end because you're all in on this year. And this is what happens when you have a GM and a quarterback that's on a hot seat. I mean, a GM and a head coach who's on the hot seat because they're playing for now. Well, I'm not trading back to try to get, I'm not trading back to try to get draft picks. I'm not drafting the quarterback of the future. I did that three years ago and I fucked it up. I got to win this year. So I'm putting all my cards out there this year. I'm getting the tight end this year. We've already got the running back. We got the wide receiver a couple of years ago. I got Aaron Rodgers. We're going right now because I got to win. Because if I don't win, I'm out. And that's the problem with you have when you have a coach and a GM on a hot seat. They've also abdicated. They've also abdicated all authority to the quarterback. Right? They've he is dict he is dictated, and he is dictating terms. So if he wants a corner, they're gonna get a corner to go opposite, right? If he wants a if he wants a kicker, they're gonna get him a kicker. You know, they, he'll, they're gonna do what he wants them to do because that's the Faustian bargain that the Jets came up with. That's what they agreed to when they acquired Aaron Rodgers. Like you are going to come here and we are going to kowtow and bend over backwards to make you happy by any means necessary. If if they want the tight end, they're going to get the tight end. So Bowers is going to be there. Is that what the team needs though? The team, not the quarterback, right? Not the 40, you know, the 40, 41 year old quarterback with a surgically repaired Achilles tendon. At some point, it has to be about the betterment of the organization. You went all in on last year and it blew up in your face. Does Brock Bowers fill a need? Does it, I mean, I don't necessarily, I don't see it. Like, I, I guess I, I just don't see, I don't see it. But that's the problem with the Jets is that they have they have bigger fish to fry because of what they did with the Aaron Rodgers trade. Both teams are kind of screwed by the decisions they made at quarterback. I think we can agree on that. One was paying a young guy who was unproven and the other one was you're beholden to an old dude. But you're, you know, how long does Aaron Rodgers have? And does Daniel Jones take that leap didn't look like he was and he's he's injured right he's trying to make it back for OTAs he's trying to make it back for minicamp basically what is he when he puts pads on center is he the guy from two years ago or is he the guy from last year so I, I don't so it wouldn't bother me if they bring in another quarterback I think it's too high at six I think it's I think it's too rich and there are teams to quote little big league They'll find somebody dumb enough to take him, right? They'll find somebody enamored with J.J. McCarthy. Or they'll find somebody enamored with Drake May if Drake May falls. Or if Jaden Daniels falls. Like, somebody will make that move. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be mad if Joe Shane made that trade. I wouldn't be mad if Joe Shane backed out and, and moved down. I, I would be okay with that if I was a Giant fan. And I am. Yeah, I mean, I think that's not a bad idea to trade back. Um, but, you know, there are rumors are circulating that the Minnesota Vikings were interested in trading with the Chargers. They wanted to get Justin Herbert. Um, they were willing to give up both their first round picks and their left tackle. And, uh, and a conditional second for Justin Herbert and pair him with Justin Jefferson. Yeah. JJ. And then in that situation, the Chargers are going to go get JJ McCarthy. Is At five? Um, 
That's insane. I, am I the only one who thinks that's it? But but it, it it's well it, it's not insane for Harbaugh because that's the kind of offense he runs. Like if you think about it, Justin Herbert's going to be wasted in Harbaugh's system. It's not it's not a quarterback system where you throw for five thousand yards. It's a very economical system. They're going to run the football. They're going to do play action. They're going to do zone reads. This isn't really for Justin Herbert. That's not what he's. That's not really what he's best at. What he's good at. He's a thrower. You know? And this is a pass league. So I think that's the idea. And, and this isn't. But Harbaugh, or Har- Harbaugh proved that he can get to the Super Bowl. With a Cal and Kaepernick. So, you know. And if you think about it, the Chargers really got to start over too, right? I mean, they, they let go all of their talent. Eckler left. Allen left. They don't really have anybody right now. So, Herbert, who's Herbert throwing to? Right That's now? fair. But at the same time... Mike Will, Mike Mike Williams is gone too. Mike Williams is a Jet. He's gone. He's a Jet. He's a Jet. Now... <laughs> but is, is this what... You know, when they were courting Jim Harbaugh, is this what they wanted to hear? Is this what Jim Harbaugh was supposed to tell them? Is this what wowed them? Or was it supposed to be, I can make Justin Herbert the best quarterback in the NFL? Not, we're going to tear this fucking thing down and I'm going to get rid of Justin Herbert. The, the, gener- the supposed generational talent. Like, you got to figure... Well, I heard he had... Tr- I, I heard his finger, his finger mm. did not heal. To oh, go back and get surgery, and he's likely going to miss OTAs. So that might have also changed your mindset. It's like, fuck, does he have a finger problem? You know, he did, he has gotten hurt every year he's been in the league. And he he hasn't missed that much time. He has gotten hurt. Every he year. he has. That's true. But he also hasn't played under a defend uh, an offensive mind. He got stuck with Brandon Staley. So, oh, my buddy, my buddy. So, you know, like, I, th- I don't know. I think they're, they're giving up. They're pulling the plug a little too early if the, if the rumors are true. But what do you, what are your thoughts on the? It just depends. On, it depends on the offense you're running. It depends on the offense you're going to run. If you're, if you're not going to be running and gunning it downfield and you're going to have this guy doing zone reads and running the ball for you know four or five yeah. times a game true i mean what are your thoughts on the marvin harrison thing there are rumors around that he's trying to tank his draft stock so he goes f- down further so i mean if he if he's available at six yeah marvin harrison's a stud athlete you would you would do that in a heartbeat but i don't know i i see him long i mean is he really just trying to avoid Arizona? Like, is that, is that what it is? Is that is that why you're trying to torpedo your draft value and move down the board? Like, I don't know. I just don't know. Do you love brownies? Of course you love brownies. But you know what's better than a brownie? A delicious, handcrafted, gourmet brownie delivered right to your doorstep. That's what our guys at Sweet Life Brownie Co. offer. Chef Tommy D and the crew offer a dozen delicious delights that you will crave from the classic OB to Dutch Apple to Campfire S'mores and many more. Check out their website, sweetlifebrownieco.com for their Friday brownie drops. At noon, their site goes live and you see what they're making. Since you're there, become a site member and earn points. You earn 50 points just by signing up. Make sure you follow them on Instagram and Facebook too at SweetLifeBrownie underscore co for the latest updates and their latest releases and creations. That's SweetLifeBrownieCo.com. Give them a call, 845-641-3043 and tell them D&Z sent you. That's SweetLifeBrownieCo.com, 845-641-3043. Sweet Life Brownie Co. Because there's always room for a brownie. And moving on to playoff hockey. After game one against Carolina, the Isles looked sharp 
at the start of game two. They skated out to a 3-0 lead in the first two periods, leaving the Hurricanes looking for answers. Unfortunately for the Islanders fans, there are three periods in a hockey game. The Hurricanes went on to score five unanswered goals with, I believe it was the final two coming in the last three minutes of the peer of the third period. Is this series over or can the Islanders get back into the series on Thursday night at UBS arena? If they're going to let Carolina forecheck and dominate and get deep and just weather down their defense, it's over. It's, over. <laughs> it's absolutely over. It was over when Aho put it in the back of the net to tie it. And then it was even more over when Jordan Martinuk got deep right. and got in behind the defense. And that was all she wrote. Now, this is what the Carolina Hurricanes do. They grind you down. They forecheck you. They just work you and work you and work you and work you. And they're so skilled at the way they work you that like, it seems like one thing possible to stop. And they're talented, too. Right, and they added Jake Genzel. Jake Genzel had the fifth. <coughs> Jake Genzel had the fifth goal, the death knell, and that sent Islander ha- Islander fans home extremely unhappy. But um, <coughs> you know, you got to look at overall performances with the Islanders. Like, who needs to step up? Matthew Barr's out. You got to show up, right? You're you're the guy. You're the the guy who supposedly the firepower on this team you need to put the puck in the net Brock Nelson another guy veteran you need to step it up right it's great that Kyle Palmieri's doing it it's great that Anders Lee is doing it it's great that Bo Horvat is doing it I mean Bo Horvat that's one that you should be you know Bo Horvat was an expensive get so he should be contributing offensively but I'm looking at Barzell and I'm like, you got to do it, man. Because you know, you know as well as I that Aho is going to be there. You know as well as I that Kuznetsov is going to be there. Like that team is a well-oiled machine. And they're just going to, they're just going to frustrate you to hell. And then they're just going to take it from you. So stand up at the blue line. Don't let them get deep. Don't let them work you. And don't let them punish you with their forecheck. Easier said than that. But that's that's the key to victory right there. Don't let them get going. Don't let them win. Uh, No, I mean, I think the series is over. Um, You can't go... Or more than the other team. You can't can't go up (laughs) 5-0 on a team in the playoffs... I mean, you can't go up 3 nothing on a team in the playoffs and then give five unanswered goals up. And I'm pretty sure three of them were scored in the final, like, three minutes of the third period. It's like you can't do that. You can't take your foot off the gas against a team like Carolina. They've been knocking on the door yeah. for, what, like four years now? They're number one in the league against the penalty kill. I mean, that's huge. And the Islanders are dead last against the penalty kill. And what kills me is that this is an Islander team. This is a veteran Islander team. These aren't rookies. These aren't first-year guys, second-year guys. This is a veteran team. This is a team that's been to the Eastern Conference Finals. This is a team that's that's been also knocking on the door the last couple of years. So to have that happen in Carolina, it's just not acceptable. You know, they better come to play against against the, 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 the Hurricanes on Thursday afternoon. Or it's a wrap. It's a wrap. And they better come out hot. And that's the thing. is like you cannot take your floor off the pedal against this team. They de- the, 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 the Hurricanes defend extremely well. And they're a veteran team. They've never been – they're they're never out of it. They're never going to think they're out of it. They're always going to come hard. They're going to play tough. They're going to finish their checks. They're going to try to get downhill. And if you don't – and if you don't, if you let off, you let off the gas for a second. It's done. Yeah. Well, if you look at it, look at the roster of the Islanders, and look at the roster of the Carolina Hurricanes. Like, it's not competitive. Like, you have a lot of guys on the Islander roster who would not crack that Hurricanes up. <laughs> you want guys with grit 
you got guys with grit and spades, right? You have Matt Martin, you have Cal Clutterbuck, Casey Sezikis. You have <coughs> you have guys on this team that are gritty and gutty, and you know they are those lunch pail guys that you like. I mean, we've wanted Matt Martin on the Rangers for years, but <coughs> it's just not enough. You you need you need though that higher end talent. Not not guys who are going to scratch and fight and claw. Those guys are great. Eventually, you do have to put the puck in the back of the net. So, it's one of those things that the Islanders need to build on this. They're that they can with what they have right now, but they definitely need to add a little bit more to this roster to make it more competitive offensively. And. I mean, they're just getting worked. Like, J.G. Pajot, he's a minus three. Lee is a minus three. Engvall's a minus two. Like, you're, you're just getting worked. Plain and simple. And, th- I mean, there's no shame in that. You look up and down the Carolina Hurricane roster, like, they've been there, man. Seth Jarvis, Kakanyemi, Kuznetsov, Jordan Stahl, Svechnikov, Tara Vinen. Brent Burns is there. Old man Brent Burns is there. And that's not including Dmitry Orlov, Shea, Slavin, Pesci. Studded. It's loaded. This team is absolutely loaded. Patrick Waugh's got to earn his money to keep this team in the series. And they just... It just feels right now that the Islanders are the speed bump until the Hurricanes have their inevitable matchup, that inevitable rematch with the Rangers in the next round. Kudos to the Islanders showed a lot of heart to get here, but this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where you're defined, right? This is where you really show up, show out, or get shown the door. And right now, they're shown the door pretty handily. You can't help but smile when you see a balloon. The simplest occasion is a party. Westchester Pop Stars, located in New Rochelle, New York, offers balloon styling and decor for all life's events. Birthdays, anniversaries, weddings, showers, school and corporate events, store openings, or just because. Westchester Pop Stars takes balloons and shapes them into works of art, creating decorative installations for your special occasions. No event is too big or too small, and their custom personalization service is top notch. Westchester Pop Stars is a private studio, quickly expanding. In person consultation is by appointment only. Send an email to westchesterpopstars at gmail.com for more information or to schedule an appointment. No need to hire an event stylist. All you need is balloons. Currently servicing Westchester, Putnam, New York City, and Connecticut. To find Westchester pop stars, search for them on Instagram, Facebook, or Google. More or less. All right, boys and girls, we have a statement. It's either more likely or less likely that it's going to happen. More or less. Number one, Aaron Judge will get his average over 250 before the end of May. Uh, I'm going to say less likely. I mean, we're sitting here on April 23rd and he's swinging with his eyes closed. Uh, he had four strikeouts a couple days ago. He just seems lost at the plate. I really, truly believe that this whole Soto thing has really gone to his head. Um, He's another one that I think he only has three hits in the last seven days. Uh, His home runs are way down. His batting average is 180. It just, I don't know if it's the toe. I don't know if it's Soto. I don't know if it's an early start. But I, I can't see him batting 350 from this point forward to get his batting average to 250. 
at currently at the current rate, it's got to be less likely. He's at 174 right now, so he would have to raise his average 80 points, 80 points in a month. That's like equatorially hot. That's equatorially hot with a guy. The strikeouts are Strike, bad. No, strikeouts are. They're bad. It's not like he. It's not. It's not like he's. Uh, the, the pitches are like down and away. Like people are no. beating him. He's getting, I mean, he's, just, he's getting that beat. kid Miller for the for uh, the A's pumping one oh three. Oakland. Like that's you know like no he's getting exactly Ugh. Ugh. like Ugh. that was Mason Miller. Check him out. That was straight gas. He. High high spin high spin rate on yeah. that motherfucker. Spun his ass into the ground is what happened. Volpe, Soto, and Judge yesterday. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. And a high of 103. Like I had 103, but that was a fever. And this guy, you know, that's the last time I saw something that much that high was a fever. So <laughs> it's hard for me to imagine that he's gonna get so equatorially hot that he's gonna he's going to raise his average. 80 points. Now he is he's second on the team in homers with three. Stanton leads with five. So you know, that part it, it is what it is. But um, yeah, I find it hard to believe that he's going to raise it that high. Can he get it up to like 220? Sure. 80 points seems like a lot, especially since Rizzo's not hitting and Rizzo's providing the protection. You need You need protection. Right, that's how you get good pitches to hit. That's why Soto's getting good good pitches to hit because they're still they still don't want to pitch to Judge behind Soto because what's going to happen? He'll get hot eventually. He'll he's a streaky hitter. He'll get hot and he'll get so hot that he'll carry the team on his shoulder the same way that <coughs> Juan Soto is doing it. So. Less likely for 80 points, less likely for 250, more likely for about 220. More or less, number two, Zach Wilson will revitalize his career with the Denver Broncos. Oh my God! I'm gonna I'm gonna go more likely. I because I, I want to see him succeed. I want to see him do well. I really believe that the Jets just mishandled this kid. Um, you know, they he got drafted number two overall. That was the problem. If he was drafted third round, fourth round, I think it would be fine. He's going to a place where Sean Payton knows how to coach quarterbacks. He's going to bring the best out of him. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. We know he's got a talented arm. He just has a habit of running in the wrong fucking direction. They. They were showing his highlights as a jet, and he's always running the wrong way. Like, gotta go forward, asshole, or throw the ball away. So, you know, I just, I hope for him that it does go well. I want to see him succeed. So I'm betting on Zach to turn it around. And uh, real real classy by the Jets saying thank you to, uh, to Zach Wilson on the Instagram page. Although they didn't say what they were thanking him for. So, um... Uh, if any Jets personnel is listening to this podcast, if you could just clear up what you're thanking him for, thanking him for a roster spot, thanking him for an extra apartment, no, that, that's, jersey, just you know, know what the thank that might be something we need to put out to our X account. What is Zach Wilson? Well, what, what? Yeah, it's almost like an, it's almost like an inside joke, right? They must be making fun of him. It's I that's a Giambi apology. Him, actually, it's kind of I can't tell you what I'm apologizing, yeah, but, but, but I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I mean, I'm thinking about Zach Wilson highlights. And I'm, I'm, I'm struggling, man. I, I, I'm struggling. I'm, I'm trying to think of. I'm trying to think of You're one thing. I'm, I'm trying. I, I'm trying to make a tribute video in my head. Right beside, beside the pro he day, wore the shit out of that suit. Day, <laughs> yeah. He wore the shit out of that suit on draft day. Still a shitty throw. Like he wears a great headband. I, I, My highlight for Zach Wilson was him throwing his team under the bus. Like I remember, we had our show that that following week. I was like, I don't think he heard the question. No, he no, must he, have no, not no, heard no, the he question did. For he him did. To say what he said. No, he did. Um, 
<laughs> I mean, he's a career seven percent completions, sixty two hundred yards, almost sixty three hundred yards, twenty three touchdowns. Like that's not great. That's just not great. He has twenty five picks for his career. Not great. Is it likely? No, it's not likely that Denver will revitalize his career. In short, no. Um, but will he... Uh, he might put up better numbers, but I don't think he's winning anything. I don't think that Denver is in the business of winning football games right now. They weren't last year when they benched their quarterback when they were on the outskirts and making a playoff spot. So. Yep. What a stellar quarterback room. You got Stidham. Oh dear God. Zach Wilson. Bo Nix, you are a Denver Bronco. Crushing it. So, I don't know. He's got talent. The kid's got an arm. It's between the ears. It's between the ears. If Sean Payton can somehow unlock whatever is in that arm, right? And if he can, if he can take what's inside Zach's head and just kind of put it to the side, they might be onto something. You, you might be because the kid's got talent, and it wasn't working here. Maybe it's closer to home, change of scenery. You know, maybe it'll do him some good. But it's really hard. It's really hard to overlook the last three seasons. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can only, I can go by what I've seen. And what I've seen is a kid who's a kid who really shouldn't have been the number all number two overall pick. He, he shouldn't have been. He should have been a clipboard jockey. Or he should have stayed in college. Yeah. Like, there you go. Now, it's too late for that. It's too late for that. This is your second chance, Zach. It might be your last chance. So, go to Denver. Head on straight. Right attitude. Yes, sir. Get there at 6 a.m. Leave at 7 p.m. First one in. First one out. Don't throw your teammates under the bus. Show us that you've taken some things away from your time in New York and that you've learned how to be a professional. Because if you haven't, enjoy the UFL, buddy. Your favorite podcast has its own merch line now. Go to the Fade Store with DNZ.com today for all your Fade Route merch needs. I'm talking tank tops, t-shirts, sweatshirts, like yoga pants, we got those too. Like some cool accessories, we got those too. And we're not done yet. We have so much more planned for you, but check out what we have today at the Fade Store with DNZ.com. That's the Fade Store with DNZ.com. The Fade Store presents the Alleged Superstar of the Week Award. All right, boys and girls, you know what time it is. It's time for the Alleged Superstar of the Week. You know how it goes. We put up a poll on our X account and our Instagram account at Fade Route DNZ and at Fade Route Podcast, respectively. And you vote. And you vote, and you vote, and you vote. And the winner of said vote gets a shout out on this year's show and takes home the coveted ass trophy. <coughs> and do you know who took home the coveted ass trophy last week, D? I don't. Clay. Clay. Oh! Yeah. An Ofer in a playoff elimination game? That's bad. Score another one for the home team. That's bad. That's a bad performance and probably cost him a shit ton of money. Because he's going to do better next year. Fuck it. Mm, yeah, do better. Just do better. But that was last week. This is this week. Who are your nominees for Legend Superstar of the Week? D. 
First up, I've got the New York Islanders. Biggest choke job in franchise history. Up 3-0 in Carolina in the second period and give up five unanswered goals. And I'm pretty sure the last three came with less than three minutes left in the game. Hope the Hurricanes put you guys out of your misery this week. New York Islanders, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Number two, the New York Jets. Pennies on the dollar. Got rid of Zach Wilson for pennies on the dollar. The former second overall pick was traded for a sixth round pick. And they've got to split his salary. They couldn't even get the other team to pick up the whole damn salary. Trey Lance, who was selected right after Wilson a few years ago, was traded for a fourth round pick during training camp last season. Jets decided to hold on to Wilson despite how he he was struggling two years ago despite trading for Aaron Rodgers in the offseason last year. Then the Jets decided to play him after Rodgers got hurt. They benched him when things weren't going so well. They played him again and they ultimately benched him again. What a disaster. What a dis- but, but, Z, they thanked him on his way out because thank you, Zach. Thank you so much for all the memories. New York Jets, you are my alleged superstars of the week. And number three, umpire Hunter Wendelstead. During the A's Yankees game yesterday, you threw Yankee manager Aaron Boone out of the game despite the remarks coming from a fan behind the dugout. You said you didn't care. You weren't throwing Aaron Boone out for what you thought he said. You were throwing him out because someone at the end of the bench said something, and you don't want to throw out a player at the end of the bench. You'd rather throw out the manager. Hunter Wendell said, just just do better, man. Just do better. Hunter Wendell said, you are my alleged superstar of the week, and the Rangers won. Now, my question is this. How can you throw a manager out for what a fan did? It doesn't matter. Well, that's the whole thing. It's like, first of all, he said, first of all, we, we need to, when you look back at the video, it's clearly yes. a fan. The yes. fan says it. There's no doubt about it. Aaron Boone is not even looking in that direction. He's actually looking down. Then the umpire has the audacity to say, I wasn't throwing it out because of what the fan said or what Aaron said. Yeah. Someone at the end of the bench said something, and I didn't want to go walk over to see who said something and throw a player out of the game. It's the manager's team. He has to take accountability, so I threw the manager out. You're the what manager. What are you talking about? This is, this is your... No. He doesn't police the fans. That's not what he does. That's insane. That is absolutely insane. Like, what are you doing? Is You're you, are insane. You, dude, how hard is it to say, I can't, I fucked up? How hard is it to say, I shouldn't have thrown him out? But not only that, if you threw, you, let's say you threw him out of the game. He, he he clearly is telling you that he didn't say anything, and then a fan said something. Right at that moment, once you realize it was a fan right. and not him... Toss the fan! Then fucking let it go. Toss the fan! Right, I'm sorry, rescind it, like, whatever. Toss the fan if you want to toss yeah. the fan, whatever, but come on, man, what are you doing? You blatantly are you just being stupid here. I mean, I've seen an ump toss an organist because they played three blind mice. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. So that's how thin skinned awesome. umps are. So, so let's be real here. Hunter Wendell stats a freaking clown. And then to say, like, it doesn't matter. You're running this shit. Like, no, he doesn't run the stands. Yeah, uh, if a play, if a, if somebody on the bench is chirping, he can go tell them to shut the fuck up. Like, he can't tell a fan to shut the fuck up. Like, you can't do that. Like, come on. Like, and, you and I are not Aaron Boone supporters. Like, I mean, he's fun. He's I actually like him. I like he's, him. I, don't, I like him. He's a clown. Aaron Boone's <laughs> a clown. I out, like laughing at him. He's been thrown out the most out of every manager in the um, in the major leagues. And, and I think he's getting up there in terms of Yankee history too. If he's not past Billy Martin, he's close. And that's in three years. So good for you. Good for you, Aaron. Uh, yeah. Between savages in the box, the weird looking face, the, the weird looking faces, and now this, 
you, you provide hours of comedic relief. It's much appreciated. Uh, first, first one, I got to go Brian Scalabrini. Uh, it's a little bit of a jump, Brian, when you insane that coach Eric Spolstra called a timeout and drew up a play for Caleb Martin to injure somebody. Hmm? What? Why? Why? Why would a professional coach draw up a play to intentionally hurt someone in basketball? In the most obvious way, in the most obvious time. That makes no freaking. And the coach that you're insinuating did this, Eric Spolstra. Okay, if it was Bill Lambeer, you might have had me. Right? If it was, if it was a guy who had a rep, sure. But this is Eric Spolstra. He's one of the nice guys in the league. He's one of the guys that. Lo and behold, but by all accounts, does it right. We're taking homerism to new heights. Brian Scalabrini, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Number two, the broadcast team for Sixers Knicks. Oh my god. Just, I had to go back and rewind and rewatch the last 20 seconds just to listen to the commentary to see if if it was me or if it was you know if it was actually happening the way that the the Sixers broadcasters had it now at one point they said Tyrese Maxey was thrown to the ground I at no point did I see Tyrese Maxey thrown to the ground he punched you right in the head. He punched me right in the head. Uh, at one point, they said that Jalen Brunson pushed off. I saw him stop on a dime. I didn't see him push off. Are, were we watching the same game? And this was after they hit the dagger, dagger, air quote, free throws that clinched the game for the Sixers. And... They said as much. Down the turnpike we go. We've done our job. We came here to take one out of the game up here to steal one, and that's what we did. Did you, though? Did you? No, you didn't. You didn't. Because it's Knicks 2, Sixers nothing. Philly Sixer, Philly 76ers broadcast team, you are my alleged superstar of the week. <laughs> Last but not least, Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest. Controversial call against Everton. And again, more lobbying for the officials. In this case, it was Nottingham Forest lobbying, saying that referee, VAR referee Stuart Atwell should not have been allowed to referee the match between Everton and Nottingham Forest because he's a Luton Town fan and Luton Town is directly behind Nottingham Forest and is trying to fight out of relegation. <laughs> it's a fucking one goal game. Yeah, thanks, Stuart. It's obvious. Cut the lip. I hate to break it to you guys. But if he was a Luton Town supporter, he would have tried to fuck over Everton. Just throwing that out there. That's how math works. He, he would have been better off fucking over Everton, not Nottingham Forest. Not to mention, who's a Luton Town supporter anyway? Come on now. Come on. We kid because we love Nottingham Forest, the petty knows no bounds. You are my alleged superstar of the week. I think we've said our piece. But I gotta say, just a lot of chirp, a lot of whine, a lot of petty bullshit this week. Should make for a good poll. Go to our X account at FaderoutDNZ. Go to our Instagram account at FaderoutPodcast. Find the polls and vote.
and vote and vote and vote and for our nominees. Just do better, boys. Just do better. This has been the Fade Route with DNZ. Thanks for tuning in. Catch our podcast on Wednesday nights on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. So until next time, stay faded, everyone. Time for us to run the go route. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of our podcast. If you like what you heard and want to hear more, be sure to like and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Rate us five stars. Leave us a review. Turn on subscription notifications and tell your friends. Spread the word. Spread it wide.